Hello, I'm Elaine Stevens and I want to welcome you to Artbeat. and welcome to Art Beat. I'm your host, Elaine Stevens. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. We're gonna take you to a wonderful, wonderful place. A little bit of my past, a little bit of your past. We're going to visit the Moran Art Studio in Ocean Springs, and you're gonna get a glimpse of old Biloxi, along with the other surprises that they have in store for you. Stay with us, we'll be right back. And welcome back to Art Beat. My first guest on this week's show is Mike Williams. Mike and I initially met when you were doing some work for us at IP. He's yes. a fantastic photographer. So much so that you're not even going to be able to tell the difference today between his photography and a fine still painting. We're standing in front of one of your masterpieces. Mike, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, this was a still that I did several years ago and uh, the way it's uh, portrayed here, it's done on canvas and it's a, a, a tr process they call canvas transfer where they actually take the emulsion from the paper mm -hmm. and they adhere it to a canvas and this particular um, still life I had it sprayed with lacquer several times and if you see in the photograph you see the the light and and the reflection here it's done in um, digitally so that in Photoshop uh, I'm sure you've heard of Adobe Photoshop I was able to take the various forms of light that I used and if I wanted a different uh, light on this, uh, this say loaf of bread as opposed to that one I'd be able to do that in Photoshop. So um, It's so real. I mean and it looks like you walked into someone's Greek home because this is what I like to eat. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm Greek, right? Okay, bread and cheese and fruit and I mean it's just so beautiful. What, tell me about the subject matter and where this was and how you decided to well, actually, this configure was in, it that way. This was in my studio in the backyard oh, okay. at my home. <laughs> in the backyard, yeah. And uh, this particular image, uh, we had this uh, pottery here. It was uh, done by a gentleman who uh, does work like George Orr. And uh, these pieces, actually, they look real, right? They look they like do. cheese. They it looks like bread. But these are actually props that I, I purchased, I believe, at uh, Hobby Lobby. Are you serious? <laughs> right, wow, the right. lighting is amazing on this. And uh, I used some some natural light from the window. I also mm -hmm. used some uh, strobe light uh, with umbrellas. And uh, like I said, I shot it on a tripod with about uh, four or five different types of lighting. And uh, I was able to erase certain areas of each layer that I layered in Photoshop mm -hmm. to get uh, to get a look. And then with the the actual printing process, I was able to have it mounted on this canvas like and sprayed with lacquer so that it looks it looks it, it I looks think amazing. Good. I, I mean I don't know if the camera's picking up the texture and the colors and the lighting of this particular work, but when I first walked into the studio here today, I actually thought it was a painting. And I know him as an excellent photographer. He's done so much work for us, like I said at IP Casino during the opening of our different venues and some of our events. And I, I know he's multi-talented, but I had no idea that you were able to do this. And of course, I know that you do other still photography as well, similar right. to, so what are some of your favorite things to do? Well, actually, my favorite thing to photograph, uh, when I photograph people, that's, that's what I like the most. Some photographers, they like to do still lives, and some photographers, they like to do uh, outdoor scene, scenery and, and whatnot, but I like to photograph people most of all, uh, portraiture, and, uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, when I used to do a lot of wedding work years mm -hmm. ago, I would do, you know, uh, wedding portraiture wow. and, uh, you know, a lot of things when it comes to people. You don't have to worry about me and weddings, so we won't okay. worry about that. But um, Mike has also done some things around the world for the military. I mean, you had a yes. sort of a remarkable career in that regard. Tell everyone about that. Yes, I was able to travel with, the, uh, uh, with a, a civilian contractor, mm -hmm. and this contractor had uh, work for uh, the U.S. Navy and I was able to go to many of the Navy bases around the world and uh, I had the opportunity to see things and do things that through photography it enabled me to do that where ordinarily you know I wouldn't be able to do that so photography has taken me places that has shown me things that that are just wonderful 
And uh, we need to get a showing for you. We need to have a show of Mike Williams photography at some point. That would be great. I know that you're very proud of the family that you've married into here. Right. So I've got to ask the question: What is it like working with that kind of creativity around you, with the Moran family all around you? Well, it's great. It's great uh, with the the artwork that's here. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to see it every day, and I get to show it to to people, and uh, I actually get to. Um, in a way market it to uh, people all around the world using the internet and it, it gives me a sense of pride to know that I'm able to uh, show work by Mary and Tommy and some of you know some of the original work by Joe Moran yeah. that's still available as well as some of the work that I photographed of his uh, years ago and was able to save and was not destroyed by Katrina so his works uh, are archived in such a way that uh, you know they can be shown throughout the, the ages. And I remember Joe, he was a remarkable man and of course as we had said earlier the, the building was in Biloxi and uh, this building of course is in Ocean Springs as we had mentioned earlier and uh, when you come in here and feel the energy it is just uh, remarkable. I mean it is absolutely uh, Gulf Coast, don't you think? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. The work, the work that you see uh, is, is stuff that you would recognize as Biloxi. Not only Biloxi now, but old Biloxi. Mm -hmm. And we have people, old timers come in, and, and a lot of tourists who come oh, in. Oh, sure. And, and, of course, many of the things that you see aren't here anymore because, you know, of Katrina. But uh, it gives us the ability to, you know, tell tourists and, and tell the people that live here, look, we have uh, a record in art. Yes, you do. The archive of our Gulf Coast is right here, right here at Moran's Art Studio, all along the wall. If you just want to take a lunch break sometime and come down here and take a look and just walk through these little cubicles of art, you'll feel that nostalgia that I'm feeling right now from the old Gulf Coast, pre-K, pre-Katrina. And you will get to meet such wonderful, talented artists like Mike Williams and his wife Cindy and his sister-in-law Mary, who we're going to be talking to right after this message. And we welcome you gladly back to Artbeat. Uh, it's what a pleasure it is to be with the Moran family today. And my guest here today at this moment is Mary Moran. She's part owner of the Moran's Art Studio in Ocean Springs, but a phenomenal artist. And of course, you you work in oils, do you not? And acrylics oils, are mostly acrylic now. But I, I did did quite a few oils in the beginning, but I've switched to acrylic painting and a little bit of pen and ink and watercolor, but. Overall, I'd say acrylics in my, my There's media. Very little that this family cannot do. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally amazed. We're uh, we're seated here before the porpoises, the dolphins. The dolphins? Yeah, these are yes. some of your bottlenose dolphins that you see out in the out in the front there, and and they're so playful and comical. I love I just love painting them. Yeah. Uh, well, was a, Mr. Bobby Mahoney said, if you could have them in the backyard, you'd have one. I said, yeah, I would. <laughs> they're water puppies. Yeah. They're like water puppies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they are. Well, what was your inspiration? Obviously, you had seen them out in your... Yeah, I've, uh, look, I spent a lot of time on the water, and I've scuba dived before, and, and that sunlight, the way they were coming down, and uh, so I could just envision this in a painting. And, so and did you do this from memory, it. or did you do it from a memory, photograph? Memory, most wow. time memory. Unbelievable. And, uh, and of course, I had a few... We don't have the coral here, but I had to add some coral to it, of just course. to add some color. But the colors I love are the beautiful, dolphins. absolutely yeah. beautiful, and the detail, and they're smiling, aren't they? <laughs> and you've sold this one, this one yes, has been yeah. purchased. Mm -hmm. yes, well, that's right. a lucky owner. That's going to be a happy, happy home. I, yeah, I, I think sure. I hope so. And he, they want two more pieces to go with it. They oh, want great. a trip. A trip. I was like, okay. <laughs> so. Now, you're seated in front of the Tullus Teledano Manor, which is obviously now, unfortunately, a memory for all yeah. of us here mm -hmm. in Biloxi, mm -hmm. and along the coast. But um, did you take a picture of that, or was that also done from memory? Well, I did have a photograph to go by. I was actually on the board of the Tullis Manor, and um, after Hurricane Katrina, I tried to focus all my thoughts and energy on paint uh, landmarks that were lost, and, uh, and that's what I started painting with, you know, Tullis, the Beauvoir, the um, Ship On Lighthouse, the Broadwater Lighthouse. Um, I was just trying to focus on some of the landmarks, and of course the Bloxy Lighthouse, and uh, I was just very thankful to see that it stood. Oh, we all know. were, because uh, so many of them toppled, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was so sad. I mean, nobody ever experienced or had thought we were going to have those kind of waves and water and such destruction, but uh, hopefully with 
the paintings will preserve a little bit of history somehow. Well, I urge you to come here and visit your your home of Biloxi the way it used to be before Katrina with the Moran family. Now, Mary, um, we all knew Joe. He was just a wonderful human being mm -hmm. and a shipbuilder yeah. and an artist. He sort of came into his art later in his life, though, didn't he? Yeah, actually, he was a fourth generation of boat builders, uh -huh. and uh, he used to actually design and build the boats, and he got hurt, and that's when he got into painting. And, uh, and it was, I hate to say, but it was a blessing in disguise because he did the most awesome, awesome work and painting said I've ever seen his very first oil painting was a still life with an apple and a, a little pot and a, a, a orange and you just want to eat the apple it's so beautiful you know and he, did he know that he could paint before no that? no uh, no uh, lessons the only drawings he ever did was designing the boats and he never had any painting lessons and he actually studied as an apprentice to William Steen, who was from New York. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Steen said, Mr. Joe, you teach me to paint boats and I'll teach you to paint portraits. Wow. <laughs> and but he, again, he could not believe that Daddy had never had a lesson. Well, and, we're uh, so thankful. I mean, my goodness, what would we do without Moran? Of course, he has quite a history, doesn't he? Yes, he and does. A I mean, uh -huh. he's a legacy yes. in himself, is he, he not? Yes, he is. And, uh, you know, he used to design and build boats, like I said, during World War II. He actually redesigned the PT boats to make them faster. A lot of little I history know there, you know. And, no uh, kidding. and wow. his paintings, he's got four of his pen and inks, and paintings are in the Smithsonian, and they were also selected to represent the uh, state of Mississippi. They were hung in the White House for a long time during uh, well, we Larry know. Speaks time period. What, which and time period was that? Larry Speaks was, in, uh, was the spokesman. Uh -huh. And then I know some. President Ford and President uh, Reagan were presented with one of his original oil paintings. Wow, and this I is amazing. That really so there's a tremendous amount of history here. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have to tell everyone who he was related to. Yes, my, my great grandfather, which was my dad's dad, grandfather, was George Orr, the Mad Potter of Biloxi. Right. And I thought, wow, how cool is this? You know? So those genes of art, those art genes are just flowing through all of you. Yes. Now, how did, when did you start working as an artist? When I was about three years really? old. Really? I think right. I was the one that always bugging Daddy. Can I do this? Can I do that? I want to paint. I want to dream. <laughs> well, you even, are truly talented. So as a three-year-old artist, what were you painting at that time? He would give me a brush. And when first I was painting some of his boats he actually built. He'd put me inside the boat and say, here, paint, these, paint the inside here, and he'd come back and check it, you know. But when he had started painting himself, he'd do Mardi Gras backdrops. Mm -hmm. And so he'd give me a big area. To, he goes, go fill this in and paint that tree over there. And I'd start painting, you know. And I was only three or four years old. And I guess uh, watching him, there's times I would go to him, I said, will you draw this for me? And he'd sketch it out for me, and, and he'd say, here, now you go try it. Wow, like, what a great teacher uh -oh. you had. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all, you know. That's but, a master teacher. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. had you were very, very fortunate to yeah, have him. He was a very patient man. That's and, what I can and, understand. I mean, just by 10 hearing what you're 11 children, actually, there were of us. And, uh, I mean, he was always trying well, to What did you just people. say about how there many? There were 11 ch children, <laughs> 11 of us. 11? Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've grown up on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, but I didn't. I thought there were only like five or six yeah, of you. But there's yeah. 11 yeah, of there's you. There's 10 right that's living, actually. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, now, as you grew older, how mm -hmm. did you decide to, to come into the art world in your own right? How did, what did you? I, I decided, um, uh, or I guess it was in my senior year, really, I decided to go ahead and go for my major. And, uh, I got a BFA in fine art and uh, started drawing and painting and, and I learned a lot from my dad even though I went to college, you mm -hmm. know, but he, he was the master, I, you know, to me and uh, I was just thankful I was able to create something, you know, and if I could ever be as good as him. <laughs> You He's know. watching you now, He's, wherever he may know. be. But how often do you paint? I mean, you're very prolific, just judging from what's here at the studio. Uh, I'd s maybe four or five times a week. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I try and uh, do it as much as I can, you know. Um, and we're so glad that you're, you've actually commemorated some of our buildings and all the things that were here 
Well, during your dad's era, during my dad's era, you know, and before the storm. It's yeah. just so beautiful to have these treasures around well, us. I'm just thankful I'm able to keep doing it yeah. and keep trying. The you know, colors and, are so vivid. Um, what are your fondest memories of your dad? Sounds ooh, like that three-year-old <laughs> painting at the, painting <laughs> at the boat saying, was one. My daddy, oh, man, we just... We were like that, you yeah. know, and uh, I remember he was actually the first one who got me on television, you know, and I was a nervous wreck, and he's like, just come with me. You don't have to say anything. Just Aww. be there, you know, and then I remember on the weekends we'd go, he used to actually draw and sketch his, you know, the shrimp boats or what he'd see, and then uh, a little later on he got his camera and started photographing to use it for reference, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can remember almost every Saturday and Sunday, and Usually in the winter months, we had those beautiful, beautiful sunsets. Oh, yes. We'd all get in the car and, and go to the beach and, and watch the sunsets, you right. know, and, and sketch or take pictures of it, you know. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the, the painting that's behind me. I know there's a Deer Island painting. Mm -hmm. And um, did you go to Deer Island to do that, or how, how was that? That's actually kind of like from memory. memory. And yeah. I have, uh, I was thinking of, how it used to be way back and then with the lighthouse way in the background mm -hmm. and of course the magnolia is our state flower which i love and i love the magnolias you know and uh they smell so good and all but i was trying i was kind of playing around a little monet technique in that right. one and um i think i did okay <laughs> i think you did <laughs> very well i, I have yeah. to tell you though my favorite is the beauvoir Oh, Obviously, thank you. yes, because it has such a nostalgic feel for mm -hmm. the antebellum period of our of our history down here, and it's so lovely. And it has it has a, a little darker tone to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. You I was, know. I was uh, trying to play on dark light a little mm -hmm. bit, and um, I actually have some hidden things in there. Which one of them is my daddy sitting at the easel painting? Oh, we'll have and to I look have for that. Jeff Davis and George Dor and the lighthouse all hidden in the the painting itself. Oh, you, oh you know, my so goodness, it's Mary, I had fun, no idea. different to do, you know. Every once in a while, I usually will do like Daddy and George or in the, in the lighthouse somewhere. And once in a while, my angels. So, so put those them are your signatures. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the Angel Series. That the Angel started. Series, I started, gosh, it's been probably 18 or 19 years ago. And um, it all went back to my oldest brother, who actually died before I was born. And um, a lot of people don't know it, but I always feel like the Bluxy Lighthouse was protected because when he passed away, my brother Tommy actually came across the highway and he, he told Mom and him, a lady at the lighthouse has Joey. And wow. they're like, what? And he goes, a lady at the lighthouse has Joey. And, and he saw her carrying Joey ascending beside the lighthouse. And then Tommy wouldn't say anything for three or four days after that. And my oldest sister brought home a condolence card with the Virgin Mary's picture on it. And when Tommy saw it, he said, that's the lady that's got Joey. What so a beautiful in, deep story. in my heart, I just, I thought somewhere along the line, I want to do some religious paintings. And I kind of stumbled into the, the painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I thought, well, I'll just do a couple of angels. Well, I think I got 20 different angels now. Well, <laughs> and, I'm sure uh, they will and they're sell. still coming to me. I, was, I got, yeah. uh, you know, it's like I can't stop it. I, and I, I just love, I love painting them. And they, you know, and they each represent the angel of love, the angel of hope, the angel of the sea. Mm -hmm. They all have different symbols and, and what they represent. I'm actually working on a journal right now that uh, a friend of mine are putting, to, trying to put together with uh, 12 different angels for each different month of the year. And, uh, Hopefully we'll get that printed soon. Well, yeah. I look forward to but seeing that. Wow, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. We haven't seen each well, other great. in <laughs> quite a long time. Oh, it's great so to see you. It, it just goes way back to our mm -hmm. childhood and yeah. the lovely and wonderful childhood we both had here in the yeah, Mississippi yeah. Gulf Coast. And when I come into the Moran's Art Studio, it's like reliving it all over again. Oh, well, thank you. So we're going to take you on yet a little bit more of a journey here at Moran's Art Studio right after this message. In case you're just joining us, you're watching Art Beat, and I'm at Moran's Art Studio in Ocean Springs with the dynamic Moran family, all of whom have creativity surging through their blood. Even the son-in-law over here has got some magic going on. But uh, we're standing near one of my favorite originals by uh, Joe Moran. Actually, it's a print, though. Canvas it's a, it's, transfer. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a canvas mm -hmm. transfer, but it looks like an original. We know who has the original, don't we, yes, Mary? We do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it is a passionate piece with a shrimp boat being tossed on the gulf 
that we have so often seen down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, but the colors are so vivid. And you were telling me that you felt that your father was a combination of two very famous artists. Yes, I, Daddy loved Rembrandt, which did a lot with dark lights, and Michelangelo for his colors. And to me, he combined the two in his paintings and his art. And, uh, and of course, you have more, and that's what oh, I call absolutely. them. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. It's just gorgeous. I mean, I, it's, you're just drawn to this the minute you walk in here. I uh, was also talking to both Mike and Mary about how they feel about the works of Joe Moran and the fact that they get rather possessive about them. There's yes. some stories about that, too, isn't there, Mike? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, there is. Uh, <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of the works that, that uh, have been purchased over the years uh, are, are works that the family likes themselves. <laughs> they want to keep them. <laughs> so some, sometimes when, when, uh, uh, when the, the originals become available and uh, there is a, a, a family member, one of the ten or so, uh, who, who might want them, then they kind of get into a, to a bidding match with the, the, the one who wants to purchase it. Yeah, some of us are looking at our mother's jewelry and wanting it, and they're looking at paintings. Okay. Well, the first time I was connected with Mike was, uh, again, I had mentioned at IP, but he brought me this wonderful project. It is the 2008 Moran calendar, and it has a wonderful story behind it. Mike, would you care to tell everyone how you came upon this creation itself? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Joe Moran, he photographed uh, the Gulf Coast uh, for several years, and he photographed them on slide film, and he used the slides as reference for his paintings. And the, the slides themselves were stored uh, at the, the Moran studio, right. and uh, they, uh, we took them out and we looked at them, and they, they looked like they needed to be repaired and cleaned mm -hmm. up. And so I actually removed all of the slides, and, or not all of them, but most of them, and was beginning to do some slide scanning work of them. And uh, by doing so, they were taken out of the studio and they weren't destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Wow. Amazing. So there are still wow. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of slides that yet to be scanned. And, and well, we took stuff. about 12 of them and we made a beautiful calendar and partnered with the Moran family at IP for the 2008. We look forward to doing this again, by the way. So yeah, hopefully awesome. we'll get uh, a chance to do some future art projects with all right. of you. Well, I hope right. so. We'll, we'll be telling you about it with uh, you. also. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. We'll be right back after this message. Well, the door may be closing behind me, but I'm certainly not closing the door on the Moran family at all. We will be back, and I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Art Beat. As we promised you, we'll be taking you on many journeys in the art world. If you have any ideas about what you'd like to see, just email us by going to www.wkfk.com, and we'll take your suggestions happily. We'll see you next week, right here on Art Beat.